Seven-seater crossovers have been gaining popularity recently, thanks partly to very popular models like the Geely Okavango. It was the standard for a while, but now there's a new player in town. This is the Cherry TQ8 Pro. Is it better than the Geely Okavango Urban Plus? Let's find out. Cherry seems to be going up market on their new models. This Tico 8 Pro sells for 1.64 million pesos, which is currently at the upper price limit of Chinese crossovers. And this is not even the top of the line variant yet. So that may seem steep initially, but once you take a look inside, you'll see that every peso is very well spent. We'll check that out later. For now, let's take a look around the car. The Tico 8 Pro features a completely redesigned front end. It features Cherry's new grill. They call this the Galaxy Sunshine Grill. So you get the Cherry logo at the center, and then you get these floating chrome accents, which I guess are supposed to look like stars, hence Galaxy. I'm not sure where the sunshine part is though. So over here, you might think that these are fake intakes, but they're actually real. You can actually see the front tire through this. It gets LED headlamps with LED DRLs, it gets this full skid plate for a more rugged look. And then over there, you have a radar unit. And that's because the Tico 8 Pro now comes with adaptive cruise control and automatic emergency braking. The Okavango's front end looks a lot more muted compared to the Tico 8 Pro. It's a more conservative design. You don't get as many design elements. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. So I really like how the Tico 8 Pro looks from this angle. I think it has a very good blend of sleek and macho. You get flowing lines, you get curves, but you still have muscular proportions. Also, unlike the Okavango, this looks more like an SUV than an MPV. The Okavango has a boxier look to it. From this angle, it kind of looks like an SUV, but it also kind of looks like an MPV. It's not bad looking, but I don't think it looks as sexy as the Tiguan 8 Pro. It gets 18-inch wheels wrapped in 235, 55-series Cooper tires. It gets disc brakes on all four corners. So here at the back, instead of one light bar, you now get two separate LED tail lamps. And in between them, you get the word Sherry in big bold letters. Down here, you'll see what look like dual exhaust tips. And you might be tempted to think that they're fake, but check this out. They're actually real. Well, kind of. If from the side, the Okavango looks like an MPV crossover hybrid, from this angle, it looks more like an MPV. It looks like it has a big butt, which is a good thing in some cases, but not on this one. I think the Tigo 8 Pro's butt looks a lot better. Overall, I think both vehicles look pretty good, but I think the Tigo 8 Pro just looks a bit better. So I'll give it a slight edge on the looks category. The Tiggo 8 Pro comes with a power lift gate, and you don't have to press any buttons to open the lift gate. You just have to stand behind it, like so. So that may look gimmicky, but if you're carrying groceries, that would definitely come in handy. So back here, you have about the same cargo space as the Okavango. You get this much cargo space with the third row seats up. If you fold the third row seats down, you get this much cargo space. And if you fold the second row seats down, you get this much cargo space. Cherry took a cue from BMW on their hood latch mechanism. To open the hood, you have to pull on the lever twice. One, two, like so. Thankfully, you get hood struts. The Tiggo 8 Pro gets a slightly bigger 1.6 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. So, this produces 183 horsepower and 275 Newton meters of torque. 
It's coupled to a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. The Okavango, on the other hand, has a mild hybrid system. It has a 1.5-liter 3-cylinder engine that produces 177 horsepower and a small 48-volt electric motor that produces 13 horsepower. This is not a full hybrid. You can't drive this in full EV mode. And the fuel economy isn't really that much better than the Tiggo 8 Pro. The first time I saw this interior at Mia's, I was really impressed. I think this is one of the most luxurious looking interiors in this price bracket and definitely a lot better looking than the Okavango's interior. On the Okavango, you get a lot of hard plastics, especially on the dashboard and the door sidings. In here, this is soft touch, this is soft touch. The leather is so soft and so supple that it almost feels sensual to the touch. The saddle brown color of the leather also gives it a more luxurious look. So both the front seats of the Tiggo 8 are power adjustable and the driver's seat gets three memory settings. Now that's something that you don't get on the Okavango and something that you only used to get on more expensive European luxury cars. The Tiggo 8 Pro also comes with headrest pillows, which is something that you only used to get on high-end German luxury cars. Not only are these soft, they also prevent your head from sliding side to side when you're sleeping. And we are not even done with these seats yet. They also have a heating and cooling function, and it also has adjustable lumbar support. Like the Okavango, the Tiggo 8 Pro also comes with a fully digital instrument cluster. Um, it also gets a massive 12.3 inch screen and it also gets a high resolution 360 camera. Um, unfortunately, like the Okavango, this also doesn't come with Android Auto, but it does come with Apple CarPlay. Um, so down here, you get another screen, and this is exclusively for uh, the, the climate control settings and also the seat heating and cooling settings. So you can use the touchscreen to adjust your climate settings, but if you prefer using physical buttons, you also have them here. Usually, I don't mind piano black accents, especially if they're on the dashboard. But I feel like there's a lot here. And they're on surfaces where you sometimes put stuff. Like this center console over here. That's almost guaranteed to get scuffed. So you have to put some sort of plastic protector on it. It does look very nice though. I'll give it that. Also, unlike the Okavango, this comes with a wireless phone charger down here. And of course, this gets a panoramic sunroof. Over here, you have two small cup holders, which are barely large enough to hold a medium-sized drink. But if you need a bigger cup holder, you can just push this back and you have more space here. You also have an air con vent here for cooling your drinks. You get that electronic parking brake with auto hold. Uh, your start stop button looks pretty fancy. Yeah, so overall, everything here looks and feels nice. I love the metallic accents. I definitely love the leather. And the seats are some of the most comfortable in this price bracket. So the back seat is just as luxurious as the front seat. Leg room is adjustable because you can move the seat forward and back, like so. And if that's not comfortable enough for you, you can also move the front seat forward you have controls here for adjusting the front seat <laughs> yep 
and now I can just lounge here in extreme comfort by the way you can also recline the second row seats and now I'm sitting here in an absolute comfort and this is the best place to appreciate the panoramic sunroof you can see the full length of it so this is definitely one of the most luxurious second row seats that you can buy at this price bracket you also get a leather wrapped padded armrest with two cup holders over here you get two air vents one usb port and some storage over here you got the same leather here as the front you also have this feature if the sensors detect that there's a vehicle coming on your side of the vehicle it will give you an audible warning so you don't open the door okay so i'm now at the third row seat and um it is usable i'm five foot eight and my head brushes against the roof but but i guess for short trips this is okay um leg room is adjustable because you can move the front seat forward you do get air vents here though with air con controls also on the other side and you get a cup holder and some storage on either side as well the Tigo 8 Pro is one of the most advanced crossovers in this price bracket it comes with almost every driver assist feature that you can get on a modern vehicle so it gets adaptive cruise so right now my feet are not doing anything I'm not stepping on the brakes I'm not stepping on the gas and it automatically speeds up and slows down depending on the speed of traffic it also has lane keep assist now unlike some systems which just beep at you this will actually try to keep you within your lane so as you can see there's a curve over here and the car should try to follow the curve let's see and as you can see it actually turns so this is not as advanced as the eyesight 4 on the Subaru Outback meaning that it only relies on the lines on the road so it can get confused if the lines are not very clear so think of this more of a safety feature than autopilot so if you're on the highway and you're a bit drowsy um, you're less likely to veer off your lane of course it comes with blind spot warning it comes with automatic braking with collision alert so right now my feet are still not doing anything my hand is just resting on the steering wheel it's not really uh, doing any steering it definitely reduces a lot of workload for the driver and I, I find this really helpful in stop and go traffic you don't get as you don't get as tired So the Tigo 8 Pro can be a very relaxing car to drive if you want it to be relaxing. Um, the NVH levels are very good. Um, it also has plenty of driver assist features so you don't have to work as much. It's also very comfortable. The Tigo 8 Pro can be a very relaxing car to drive if you want it to be. But if you want it to be less relaxing and more exciting, it can also be that. has a 1.6 liter engine that produces 183 horsepower and 270 newton meters of torque which would make it one of the most powerful engines in the segment and this does not have a CVT this has a seven speed dual clutch transmission handling is also pretty good this is one of the few crossovers in this price bracket that comes with um, fully independent suspension all around. The Tigo 8 Pro can do 0 to 100 kph in a little over 8.2 seconds, 
which is a bit quicker than the Okavango's 9.3 seconds and just a little bit slower than the Coolray's 7.9 seconds. Despite having slightly less power, the Tiggo 8 Pro is lighter than the Okavango, so it feels a bit more agile. The Okavango has slightly better NVH levels, but the Tiggo 8 Pro offers a better driving experience overall. One, because of the driver assist features. I just love adaptive cruise control, especially in heavy traffic. And two, because it also feels more agile. And the paddle shifters are also a huge plus. The Ford Territory used to be the most feature-packed crossover under 2 million pesos. Not anymore. That distinction now belongs to the Cherry Tigo 8 Pro. Cherry practically checked every box in the spec sheet. It has most of the Okavango's features like a 360 camera, a panoramic sunroof, but it also has a lot more. It has the most driver aids and active safety features, like it has adaptive cruise control, automatic steering, blind spot warning, automatic braking, it has seat heating and cooling, it has three person memory settings. It currently is the most feature packed crossover under 2 billion pesos. The Tigo 8 Pro comes with a lot more features and it has a much more luxurious interior, and all of that comes at a cost. The Cherry Tigo 8 Pro is more expensive than the Geely Okavango by about 150,000 pesos. Chinese car brands have come a long way since they were considered cheaper imitations of Japanese cars. They're now setting the standard for features, for interior quality, and for refinement in their respective price brackets. Whether you get the Cherry Tico 8 Pro or the Giglio Covango, you'll get an excellent vehicle that'll put a lot of mainstream brands to shame. As for which one I would go for, I'd definitely go for this. I think the driver aids and the vastly more luxurious interior are worth the price difference. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video.